Monica Draw is a woman who looks to the future with hope, and it's difficult to imagine she could have hope considering the horror she was forced to endure. On the morning of June 25, 2009, this young mother and wife would be plunged into a nightmare. The injuries she suffered that day make it difficult for her to talk. She must cover her windpipe whenever she speaks, but she wanted to share her story with the Voice of the Martyrs team. The militant Islamic group Boko Haram were burning churches and houses that belonged to Christians in Monica's town in northern Nigeria. When she and her husband David, a policeman, tried to escape the rampage with one of their sons, they found themselves surrounded by members of the Boko Haram, who have made it their mission to drive all Christians out of northern Nigeria, and they then began to aggressively question her and David. Are you Air Force? She don't answer for me. Say, you are Air Force. She don't answer. So you called him. Somebody slap you to him. So he said, don't touch me again. So somebody carried the neck, uh, the knife, caught him. So he cut, uh, he cut the, this neck. She got caught him with her hand. So somebody coming with her back. She caught her neck. So the head in another place, body is another place. With her husband now dead, the Boko Haram militants twice demanded to know if she was a Christian or Muslim. Monica knew if she said Christian, she would likely be killed. See, they asked me, are you a Christian, are you a Muslim? I said, no, I'm a Christian. So they told me, lie down. So I said, I don't lie down. Because she told me, I said, lie down. To have somebody share something so horrific in person, after knowing that those men would not hesitate to do the same thing to her. And for her to say, I'm a Christian, it was amazing. Monica was forced onto the ground and then cut with a machete on her arm. Then her throat was cut. Believing she was also dead, the terrorists left. Monica was unconscious for two hours. Eventually, some Christians arrived and gave her some water. If I drink water, water rush in the, my neck. If I drink, it rush my neck. Soon the Christians had to leave her there because it was not safe for them to stay. Monica was left behind, certain to die. For the next three days, she would come in and out of consciousness and would pray. In the name of Jesus, if he Jesus help me, I say, please, my Jesus, you go help me in this dangerous place in this the Boko Haram crisis. So in the, uh, the prayer, uh, the prayer, every day, there are three days of the prayer. During those three days, Monica says she saw many creatures in white who comforted her, but she is unable to describe them. No. I did see them really white. There, there are many people. I don't know all people or animals. I don't know. After three days, Monica was taken to the hospital where she would find out one of her sons had also been killed during the attack by the Boko Haram. She would spend nine months in the hospital for surgery and treatment and continue to see these beings in white clothing, which she says brought her joy. VOM Medical, a ministry of the Voice of the Martyrs USA, also helped with Monica's recovery. When Monica was asked if she was able to forgive those who took away her husband and son and left her badly injured, she was quick to reply. I say, God, these people should do something like but the devil sent all them to do something. So forgiveness. Monica received a sewing machine and a grinding machine from VOM Canada's sister mission in Nigeria. She now has her own business sewing clothes and lives with her father along with her one surviving son, assisting him on his farm. She was asked if she appreciates the help she has received from her Christian family in other parts of the world. Yes. I am grateful. I told him that God bless all of them. It was such a privilege to pray for Monica. And one of the most touching moments was when she had to hold her finger on her trach and she started to pray for us. That was very touching and moving. And that is what the body of Christ is all about. Not only do they need us, 
but we really need them as well. Despite the loss and trauma she's experienced, Monica says she will never turn her back on God and still has hope and continues to set her heart on eternity and plans on serving Jesus every day for the rest of her life. Fatua Paulus also witnessed the violent death of her husband in April of 2011. Kala was a pastor. I was sitting with my husband in the house with my friend. Her husband then rushed in and said something bad is happening outside. We went outside to see what was happening. What they saw was a mob of Muslim youth in the streets of Gombe, breaking windows in their neighborhood and armed with machetes, upset at the re-election of President Goodluck Jonathan, a Christian. Fatu says they came back into the house and locked the door. We held the door from the inside, stopping them from getting in. But they were pushing the door, trying to get in. But they couldn't, so they started throwing rocks. They put fire on the rocks. Eventually, the mob of Muslim youth forced the door open. Fatu tried to convince her husband to run away, but he refused to leave her. When they got inside, my husband asked them why they were after him. They said, we want to kill you because you're an infidel. He raised his hands and said, well, to God be the glory if you say you want to kill me because I am ready. He just raised up his hands. He fell down when they used a machete on his head. Blood was gushing out. He fell down. After the mob left, Fatu tried to move her husband's lifeless body into the shade. But there was nothing she could do. Kala was dead. He was a loving husband. He was taking good care of me and the children. Fatu is now a widow and the mother of nine children and seven grandchildren. Instead of being bitter, she has forgiven those who brutally killed her husband. I not only try to forgive them, but I am also praying for them because they didn't know what they were doing. If I am able to endure like him, I will see him again and that will bring me comfort. I started calling out to God, God help us, God help us to escape from this attack. Esther Simon is referring to the March 7, 2010 massacre of Christians in the village of Dogonahawa, near the city of Jos in Plateau State, in which an estimated 500 people were killed in the night by militant Muslims. We were all asleep. Then at about 3 a.m. we started hearing gunshots. Then everyone started running from their homes in a panic. We discovered the village had been surrounded. There were lots of killings, shootings. Some of us were able to escape to a nearby village. The killing continued. Esther would be reunited with her two children that morning, but that relief soon turned to despair when she discovered her husband's dead body later that day. He was shot in the stomach. When I saw my husband's dead body, the first thing that came into my mind was, Oh God, you've taken my husband. How am I going to cope with life with my children? That morning, there was a lot of pandemonium. Everyone was confused. Everyone was wailing and crying in the village. The process of getting through such an ordeal hasn't been easy for Esther. We asked her how she's been able to forgive those who committed such an atrocity that took her husband and many of her friends and neighbors. I came to understand that if I did not share the pain, I would be hurting myself and would be sinning against God. I learned with time to let it go off my mind and forgive them. It was not easy at the beginning, but with constant prayers and studying the Word of God and having people from the church coming to visit and encouraging me, I was able in time to forgive. Also knowing that one day everyone is going to die, so I learned to forgive them. After the attack, Esther had no means to support her family and her children had no place to go to school. I was pained in my heart because the children were just sitting around at home and there was no opportunity for them to go to school. Then one sister approached us, said she was going to take my daughter to school, and the Stevens Center came and took the boy to give him an education. 
The Stevens Center is a Nigerian safe house for children who have lost one or both parents to anti-Christian violence. At the Stevens Center, children like Esther's 10-year-old son, Dazik, receive housing, food, and an education in a safe place. I know the best thing I can do for my children in the absence of their father is to give them an education so they will be able to do something for themselves. Left without a husband to provide for her and her children who spend the summer with their mother, Esther was able to start a business with help from the Stevens Center. She opened a general store that sells practical items like kerosene, charcoal, firewood, beverages, and fruit. I am most grateful to God because before my husband died, we were living in a rented apartment. But after his death, the Stevens Center gave me money to start a business. From this business, I was able to buy a piece of land and had a three-room building put up. Esther now has her own place to live and also for her children when they come home for the summer. She is grateful to Christians around the world, including Canada, who have helped persecuted believers like her. My appreciation is inexhaustible because after my husband's death, it looked like we had no hope anymore. But now we see that there are people who think about us, pray for us from all over the world. And when we see you come, it gives us hope, gives us courage that God is still with us. We are very grateful. Please tell the women and all of the Christians in Canada that the women and widows in Nigeria are very grateful. First to God for sending people to help us and also to thank them for remembering us in our pain and trouble. When the attack happened, it looked like people were no longer people. Now we know that someone far away cares about us, thinks about us, and prays for us. To learn more about how you can help persecuted Christians in Nigeria who have lost so much, please visit The Voice of the Martyrs online at www.persecution.net or call our office toll-free at 1-888-298-6423.